Okay, the last topic I want to talk about this week is buying on margin, or selling on margin, actually. Margin implies that you are borrowing some asset to facilitate a trade. So first we're going to look at buying on margin, which I think is quite simple, or it's more simple than, than short selling anyway. Uh, when you buy on margin, you borrow part of the total purchase price of your position. So your broker is loaning you money to do this. This uh, is not at interest-free rates when you are loaned money to make trades. Usually you pay like 6 to 7% a year. Depends on the brokerage and it depends how much money you have. And, of course, this money you borrow is collateralized by your securities. So if your equity goes down for whatever reason, usually because the price of the stocks you bought are going down, then the broker is able to liquidate your securities and collect what they lent you. So the broker is protected by the collateral you have in your account, which are the securities you buy. Margin refers to the percentage contributed by you, by the investor buying on margin. So when you borrow money to buy more stock, than you otherwise could. You profit exceptionally when the stock goes up, but you likewise get slammed extra hard if the stock goes down. Like if you have $10,000 and you buy $10,000 and then borrow another 10 to buy an additional 10, so you have 20,000 altogether. You have $10,000 of equity, but $20,000 of stock. When the stock moves by 1%, your equity will now move by twice that because the position size you have is twice what your equity is. Right now, the initial margin set by, I think this is a, the Federal Reserve. I'll check that and get back to you. Anyway, the initial margin is 50%. So uh, when you get a position that you have to borrow money for, you have to have 50% uh, of the position um, from your own equity. Maintenance margin is a minimum equity that must be kept uh, just to maintain your position uh, for that account. So if the value of the securities falls too much, your broker says, all right, we got to liquidate these securities to get the money to make sure we get paid. And that is called a margin call. All right, let's look at an example. I think actually putting numbers to things help people a lot. In this case, you have $6,000 of equity. And you decide to buy 100 shares of a $100 stock. So you're spending $10,000. You're buying $10,000 worth of stock. Because you only have $6,000 of equity, you have to borrow $4,000 from your broker. So uh, your initial margin here is 60%. Your margin is always your equity divided by the position value, as we see right here. This is an important equation to remember. Your margin percentage is the equity you have divided by the position value you have. Now, when you borrow money to buy a stock, think about uh, this from an accounting perspective. You have this stock as an asset on your balance sheet. What do you have as a liability? Well, you have the cash you borrowed. No matter how the stock does, whether it goes up or down, this $4,000 you borrowed, you're always going to owe until you sell the stock and, and pay it back. So if the stock falls from $100 a share to $70 a share, an asset on your balance sheet has decreased in value but your liability hasn't decreased in value, so this reduces your equity, right? In this case, if it's $70 a share, you have a $7,000 asset, and you have a $4,000 liability, so your equity has fallen from 6,000 to 3,000. Now what's your margin percentage? Well, again, it's equity divided by position value. Your equity, however, has fallen to 3,000. So it's 3,000 divided by 7,000, and your margin percentage is 
I will probably ask you this type of question on an exam sometime. How far can the stock price fall before there is a margin call? Let's assume the maintenance margin is 30%. First, get an equation for what your equity is at any time. Well, what do you own? What's, what assets do you have? It's 100 times the price of the stock. Here I use P to denote price of the stock. That's your assets, right? That's all you have right now in this simple problem. 100 shares of this stock. Now what are your liabilities? Well, you borrowed 4,000, so that's never going to change. So this describes your equity for this position. 100 times whatever the share price of the stock is, minus $4,000. That's your equity. Your margin percentage is equity divided by position size. What's your position size? Well, again, this is the position size. It's just 100 shares times the price of the stock. So we insert that and we get your percentage margin is equal to your equity here. In this case, 100 shares times the stock price minus the 4,000 you borrowed, divided by the 100 shares times the stock price, right? The, the size of the position. If you think of this from an accounting perspective, you usually will not go wrong. Think about how you would calculate your equity, which is just your assets minus your liability, the value of the position, and then from there calculate percentage margin. So to finish this problem, what we would do is we would plug in 30%, right? That's when a margin call would trigger, when your margin drops to 30%. And then we would solve for P, which is very, very simple algebra. P is about $57. So once the stock price hits $57, a broker will call you up and say, yo, your equity is too low. This is getting too risky for us. I mean, they are supposed to protect you somewhat too, but the broker, bottom line, cares about themselves. And if your equity is too low, they worry that with some crazy stock price movement, it could actually go negative and you could no longer cover the balance, right? The collateral in your account, the stock you have, is no longer sufficient to protect the broker from the money that they lent you. All right, we're going to look at short sales now, which is similar, but instead of borrowing money to buy a stock, you're actually borrowing the stock to sell for cash. So the purpose of a short sale is to profit from the decline in the price of some asset. When you short something, you're betting against it. And by the way, you can more generally call a short as just to bet against something. So like um, if I make a bet with my friend that, uh, I don't know, the price of dollar, the, the US dollar is gonna fall. I could say that I'm short the US dollar because my net exposure in all the bets that I make is negative. I want the price of the dollar to fall. The more restrictive definition, the more specific definition, and this is one we'll almost always use, is where you borrow an asset to sell with the intent to then buy it back later at a lower price. So that difference in price is the amount of profit you have. So this is the basic mechanics of a short sale. You sell it, you get cash, you deposit the proceeds. And by the way, the cash you get from these proceeds, you can't pull out and do stuff with or even make other trades with. The broker insists you keep it and hold on to it just as collateral. Now the broker can charge you, or not charge you, the broker can give you interest on this cash you have from a short sale, but you do not have the flexibility to take this cash and like buy stock with it. And then you close the position and buy the stock back and uh, return it to the party you borrowed it from, which in our case as retail traders is almost always the brokerage you're trading with. The broker is the one who arranges the borrowing of the stock, and the broker does that automatically. So it's not like the broker goes to someone's door and knocks on them and says, hey, will you lend this person some stock? The broker has all the stock on their books, and if the broker sees there's this stock available for someone to borrow, if I want to do a short sale, say, the broker will just lend me this stock because the broker has this stock to lend. Okay, let's look at a example with numbers for a short sale. So in this case, you're going to short a thousand shares of dot bomb, 
this company, Dot Bomb. And its initial price is $100 a share, so you are shorting $100,000 of the stock. Now in this case, we're saying our starting equity is only $50,000. So our margin is 50,000 or 50% 50 because the position size has a value of $100,000. It doesn't matter that it's not money, it's stock, right? It's $100,000 of stock instead of $100,000 of money. But the position value is still 100,000. So when you compute your margin, it's your equity divided by the position size or 50%. There is an important accounting difference between this and the buying on margin that we noticed uh, that we uh, looked at before. In a short sale, what you have borrowed is the stock, which means the value or the the thing that can change in value is the liability on your balance sheet. When you borrow money to buy a stock, the the item that can change in value is the asset on your balance sheet. If the stock goes up and down, your asset increases. If it goes down, the asset value decreases. For a short sale, however, it's the liability. The stock is the liability. So if the stock goes up, the liability increases. And if the stock goes down, the liability decreases. Your assets are static in this case for a short sale. Your assets stay the same. Your assets are just the cash you have. Let's actually crack open a simplified balance sheet here to explain. This is what we start with. 50K in cash, so we have no liabilities, therefore our equity is 50,000, right? Equity is assets minus liabilities. Now, we borrow $100,000 of stock and sell it. And that happens simultaneously, by the way, if you, if you actually do this at your brokerage. So we get $100,000 more of cash, so we have $150,000 cash total. And now we also have this $100,000 liability. So our equity is $150,000 in assets minus $100,000 liability. So our equity is still $50,000, right? Our equity hasn't changed. Now, suppose this drops to $70 per share. Our assets stay the same. Your assets are fixed in this case. What changed is your liability. What you owe has gone down in value. Well, you only owe $70,000 of stock because if you bought it back, that's how much it would cost you now. Because your assets have stayed the same, but your liability has decreased, your equity has gone up. It's increased by the amount that the liabilities have decreased, which is 30,000, right? So your equity has increased 30,000 to $80,000. Now let's say, okay, the stock's dropped as much as I think it will. I'm gonna buy back the stock for $70,000, and that's called covering your short sale because you, you buy it back and you close the liability. Both your assets and your liabilities go down by $70,000 because you use $70,000 of cash to buy back the stock to close, to give up your liability. And so your ending balance sheet looks like this. You have $80,000 of cash and there are $40,000 of equity because you have no more liabilities. You don't owe anything. So your profit is the ending equity minus your beginning equity, which in this case is $30,000. Hypothetically, you would have made $30,000 in this short sale situation. Uh, you can do this by decline in share price multiplied by the number of sh shares sold short if you want to do this shortcut. <laughs> shares sold short, that's a, uh, say that 10 times fast. I was having trouble saying it once. Okay, now, Let's look at what a margin call is for a short sale. So with a short sale, your equity goes down if the stock goes up, right? You're betting the stock will go down, so your equity increases if the, the price goes down. But if it goes up, your equity decreases. So how much can the stock price rise before a margin call is made if our maintenance margin is once again 30%? We go back to the same equation we used, margin percentage is your equity divided by the position size. In this case, it's 150,000 minus 1,000 times the price of shares. That's your equity, remember, because $150,000 is your assets and 
your liabilities are a thousand shares of the stock you borrowed times the price of the stock, right? Like the value per share. So this in parentheses here is your equity. Position size is the same as when we bought the stock instead of shorting it. The position size is just the number of the value of the stock you you are short or a thousand times the price of the stock in this case because you shorted a thousand shares. So we have same type of algebra. We're solving for when this margin will be 30% because at that point when the price goes up to that level in this case our broker will call us up and say hey you better deposit money in your account fast or we're closing your short for you and taking our money back. So in this case we solve for P and we get that P, the price of the stock, is about $115. Quick asterisk here on this $150,000. This $150,000 is there because that's the initial margin that you started with, $50,000, plus the proceeds for the short sale, which is $100,000, right? That's your assets. That's why your assets is $150,000. By the way, for those of you interested, this is what a margin call looks like. This is not the last time this has happened to me either, by the way. Uh, I often maybe am a little bit aggro about the kind of positions I have or the, the amount of positions I have. I would never take one position that was so risky I got a margin call for that. This is actually a different, uh, a different type of margin call where you simply have too many positions open. Like, essentially this happened to me because the total dollar value of all the positions I had was too big. It's essentially what we did here, but instead of for one position, it's for all the positions you have. The calculation is quite similar. But yeah, I was trading and uh, this popped up on my screen one day and I was like, whoop, oh boy. My broker says, immediately put $14,000 in the account or uh, we will liquidate right now. So... <laughs> I have a funny story here, actually. Um, this was right after market close or like r right before market close, like at 3.55 or 3.56. And uh, I was uh, more naive than I am now, let's say. And even though I had a, a high dollar value of positions, my portfolio was not risky. And the reason it wasn't that risky was because it was quite diversified. My positions were, were numerous. No single position was super big, so the account wasn't exposed to a very high degree of idiosyncratic risk, which we'll learn what that means uh, in a couple weeks. And um, I wasn't like overexposed to one industry. Like So even though I had tons and tons of positions, my portfolio wasn't that risky, and I thought, uh, I think they're bluffing. I don't think my broker's going to do shit. They're just going to let me have, have these positions. So uh, I called their bluff, and I said, all right, I'm just, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to close positions. So there, there's two things you could do, by the way. You could add money. You could add this amount of money immediately. Or, what most people would do, you close some of your positions you reduce your position sizes, which brings up your margin that way. Anyway, I said, eh, they're not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna, gonna keep them open. So I called their bluff and they weren't bluffing. 20 minutes later, they, uh, they had securities that they liquidated at their discretion. Um, they, and they didn't liquidate my whole portfolio or something that I had at the time, but they did liquidate some securities that maybe I would have preferred not be liquidated. I don't know exactly what their algorithm for choosing which ones get liquidated first, but uh, some of the ones they liquidated I would have preferred been kept open over others. So, lesson learned. When you get big, bold, all caps notices from your broker, I guess it's not a bluff. They actually mean what they say. One quick side note. There is a different, more complicated a way to calculate margin that has happened recently. This has been a change uh, in the brokerage laws and it's called portfolio margin and it kind of does what I thought would happen with my broker looking at my portfolio and saying, you know, these are a lot of positions but the risk of this portfolio is actually not too bad. 
And so that's a different type of margin, and this is kind of a, a newer age type of margin. But we're not going to talk about that too much in the course. Um, I might make one comment about it a bit later when we talk more about the benefits of diversification and portfolio theory and how to make like a, a big solid portfolio. But for now, just stick to these margin basics. So, all right. This is a bit denser week. I think a bit more fun week, though. I actually like the material this week a lot. So we're going to end with the last quiz for this chapter, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you guys in a few days. So have a great weekend. See ya.